Varuk. Bu ne demek aksa? As usual, it's always good to be here. And uh, I want to share a message that God has placed on my heart several months ago. In fact, uh, it's a message I even preached when we were in uh, Romania in August. I, I preached this, this message there. I, I believe it's a one that the church needs to understand. We're going to talk about honor. So let's look at Mark chapter 6. First six verses. Az a hatodik részben az első hat Mark ment, és követték a tanítványra is. Amikor azután eljött a szombat, a tanítvány kezdett a sinagógában. Sokan hallgatták, és hábekorban így szóltak. Honnan veszi ezeket? Miféle bölcsesség az, ami neki adatott? És miféle csodák ezek, amelyek kezen imán támadnak? Nem de az, nem de az ács kemesz, Mária fia, Jakab, József, Júdás és Simon testvére. Nem itt él nekek közöttünk húvai is? És megbotránkoztak benne. Jézus pedig így szólt hozzájuk. Nem vetik meg a profitát másod, csak a hazájában. A rokonai között és a saját házában. Nem is tudott itt egyetlen csodát sem tenni, azon kívül, hogy néhány beteget kezet rájuk téve megjúgyított. Csodálkozott is a hitetlenségükön. Majd sorra jártam a környező palvokat és tanított. Álljunk fel és megmáltozunk. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, köszönöm, hogy megjúgyított. We thank you for the Spirit of God who is here today. Lord, I pray that you would help us to open up our hearts. That the Spirit of God would take your word and plant it in our hearts. And Lord, I pray that if there's any blind areas in our lives, és Uram, ha bármilyen sötét része van a életének, any areas where we are not honoring you and we are not, if there's a hindrance in our lives, bármilyen része, amivel nincsen tisztelet a felé, ami akadályi életünkben. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would speak to those, to our heart. Kérlek, Uram, hogy a Szent Szállat szóljon a szívünkhez. And reveal those blind areas. És mutassa meg nekünket ezek a sorban. And open up our hearts. Nyissa meg a szívünket. So that we, that, that, that the word of God may penetrate those areas. Hogy Isten közik el behatolja ezekre a területekre. That we might change. És hogy megváltozzunk. And become more like you. És hogy olyannak kell állni, mert együnk, mint amilyen te vagy. A Jézus nevőben. Amen. In this passage that we read, we see that Israel was back in Nazareth, or Jesus was back in Nazareth. And uh, he was teaching in the synagogue. But notice that in verse 5 he said he could do no mighty works there. De a szentlék versben nézzük meg, tekintsük meg, hogy nem tudod semmi csodát tenni. Notice it didn't say he didn't want to do anything. Nem azt írja, hogy nem akart tenni semmi csodát. Didn't say he wouldn't do mighty works, miracles. Nem azt írja, hogy nem tett semmi csodát. 
said he could not do any miracles. In other words, there was something that was hindering him from performing any miracles. And we know that as we read through the Gospels that wherever Jesus went, he always did miracles. He was always healing the sick, raising and, 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 and uh, opening the eyes of the blind. But here, but it, the it says he could do no mighty works. Why? What was hindering? Now, we could say that in verse 6, it says he marveled at their unbelief. People say, well, maybe they didn't have enough faith. Olvassuk a hatodik versben, hogy csodálkozott uh, is hitetlenségükön, uh, feltételezzük az, hogy nem volt uh, hitük. But I believe verse 4 is, the, is the, the key, the answer. De én azt hiszem, hogy a negyedik versben található a kulcs, a válasz. Jesus said, himself said, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country. Maga Jézus mondta, hogy nem metik meg a profitát máshogy csak a hazájában. They did not honor Jesus. And you notice what they, they said in verse three in verses two and three. As Jesus was teaching, they said, "Where did he get all these this knowledge and this wisdom?" Isn't this the carpenter who lived next door? Nem ács fia e ő, aki itt lakik mellettünk, nem messze. Isn't this the son of Joseph and Mary? Or the hát, son of Mary? Hát nem Mária fia ez az, ez az, az ember. I remember when he was a little boy, he played with our kids. Jól emlékszem, amikor kisgyerek volt, ott játszott a mi gyerekeinkkel is. And so instead of honoring him and raising Jesus up and recognizing who he really was. Ahelyett, hogy tisztelnék, ahelyett, hogy fölemelnék őt, és tisztelnék őt azért, aki ő valójában volt, They lowered him to just a, 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 a boy they remembered when he was younger. They, they did not value him, they did not honor him. And I believe that that is a problem that we face in the church today. I think it's, in, in some ways we are not seeing the power of God and the presence of God. We're not seeing the miracles. We're not seeing revival. Because in some ways we are not honoring God as we should. So, in order to understand, we need to know what honor, to, what it means to honor Him. The word honor literally means it means to value. As a tisztelet szó, szó szerint azt jelenti, hogy értékelek. It, 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 it literally means to 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 make weighty, to put weight on. As asszenzi valóban, hogy valakinek van súlya, valakinek valakinek elhelyezek súly, súlyhelyzet. The the Hebrew word for honor literally literally means weight. Tehát a tisztelet szó a Héberben az szó szerint azt jelenti, hogy súly. So when we honor somebody, we are giving them a, a weight of value. We're, we're placing a, a value upon them. We, re we recognize their worth. And we give them glory. Give it glory. And Kate, here. Over. Okay. 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 I want to show you a picture here. This is, how many of you ever heard of Niagara Falls? This is a beautiful waterfall between Canada and the United States. Nancy and I have been here. In fact, we've actually stood right here. And 
When you're standing right there, you see the beauty of the falls. You can even feel the water spray on it. You hear the, the roar of the falls. I mean, it is so loud, you can hardly even hear one another when you're standing next to each other. And you can actually feel the power. Now I can guarantee you when you're standing here and you look at that water at Niagara Falls, you're not going to say, oh that's nice. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's okay. You're going to stand there in awe. You're going to be amazed at the power. You're going to be amazed at the glory. And the beauty. And, and you, you, just, you just can't imagine what it's like. And, and just look at the picture is not enough. That make us that give it, that means it, that you don't make that again do. And listening to somebody talk about it, words cannot describe it. And what I can do, then I get a song that to that is layer than me and us. You have to be there to really experience it. What can I not even make the bus stop? Now imagine what it would be like. Here's the devil in that now. To be in the presence of the one who created that. How on the God you're not even in there. I keep asking, is that shit done? Imagine what it's like to experience the God who created that. I think too often that we, we treat God like the, Nazareth, the people of Nazareth treated Jesus. That we don't see and understand his glory. We don't esteem him, we don't value him. We lower him to a level that we feel we can understand. And God is much bigger than that. He is, he is he's glorious, he's awesome, he's wonderful. He's powerful. And we need to give him the honor that is rightfully his. I think of what John said in John chapter 1, verse 14. When Jesus talks, when John talks about Jesus uh, becoming flesh and dwelling among us, and he says, and we beheld his glory. We beheld his glory. I, I believe that the disciples, when they saw Jesus, they didn't say, oh, that's nice. They were amazed at his glory. They were amazed at his teaching. They were amazed at his power. And they gave him the honor that was rightfully his. One way to understand what word means is to look at what it is not. To look at negative examples. When we talk about honoring somebody, we're not talking about just giving them flattering words. Isaiah 29.13 
And the Lord said, because this people draw near me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me. When we talk about honoring God, we're not just talking about using words. But we are talking about honoring Him with our actions, with our lives. When we stand, when we come to church like services today, and we saw, sing songs that say Jesus is Lord. Are they just merely words? Are we, are we actually doing what the Lord tells us to do? In fact, Jesus himself said, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things that I command you to do? And this is what God is saying here. They, they, they honor me with their words. But they're not honoring me with their life or with their actions. So when we talk about honoring God, we're talking about our, our entire life, not just words. An example of that is with Eli in the Old Testament. First Samuel chapter 2. Verses 27 through 30. Eli was the high priest of Israel at the time. But his sons, who were also priests, were wicked men. They were abusing the people. They were, they were uh, not following God's instructions for the priests. They were immoral. And they were wicked men. And the, but God, but Eli did nothing about it. And so God tell, God sent a prophet to Eli. And this is what he said, verses 27 through 30. És ezt mondta az 27. igevers, 30. igevesig. És eljövő Istennek embere élihez, és mondta neki, így szól az Úr, nem jelentettem én ki magamat atyád házának, midőn Egyiptomban a fáraó házában valának? És kiválasztam öt, pap, öt papnak, Izrael minden nemzetségi közül magamnak, hogy áldozat az én oltáromon, hogy füstöl, füstölő szert füstölő tessen, hogy ez elfordult, Előtte viselje. Az atyád házára bízta az Izrael fiáinak minden tüzes áldozatait. Miért tapossátok meg az én véres áldozatomat és íte áldozatomat, mi, melyet rendeltem e hajlékban? És te többre becsülött fiaidat, mint engem, hogy magatokat hizdáljátok az én népem Izrael minden áldozatának erejével. Azért itt szól az Úr, Izraelnek Istene, jó lehet megmondottam, hogy a te házad és a családnak háza mindörökké én előttem jár. De most azt mondja az Úr, távol legyen tőlem, mert akik engem tisztelnek, azok a tisztességet szerzek, akik azonban engem megtalálnak, megmondhatnak. Notice he said, Eli did not value God's word enough to obey it. Tehát nézzük, hogy ö, azt mondja, hogy Éli nem ö, értékelte eléggé Isten igéjét, He esteemed his sons more than he did God. And the consequences was that Eli and his sons were cursed. Verse 31, we see that. Ímény napok jönnek, és levágom a te karodat, és adják házának karját, hogy ne legyen én ember a te házadban. And we, and shortly after this, both Eli and his sons were killed. Rövid időn belül, az Éli és a fia is meghaltak. 
But notice what God said at the end of verse 30. Those who honor me, I will honor them. Those who despise me, shall be like this. In many cases, cursed. If we honor God, He will honor us. He will bless us. We will receive His glory. We will receive His presence and His power if we honor Him. So that means we give Him the glory that is His. And not just with our words, but with our lives. Malachi also talks about this. Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. God begins this book with this question. And the rest of the book deals with the subject. He says, a son honors his father and a servant his master. If then I am your father, where is my honor? This could be the, the title of this message. God is asking us today, Ma ezt kérdezi tőlünk Isten. If you call me your father, ha, én, ha atyádnak szólítasz, where is my honor? Hol az én tisztességem? Where is my honor? Hol az én tisztességem? If I am a master, where is my fear? És ha én vagyok az, az úr, akkor hol az én félelmem? And he continues on in chapter 1 and he gives a, and they ask him, well, how did we not honor you? És így folytatja, uh, uh, folytatódik ez a, ez a beszélgetés. He goes on to explain in, in chapter, the rest of chapter 1. God had commanded Israel that when they offered sacrifices, they were to give the very best of their animals. But starting with verse 7, he says, you haven't been obeying my word. Instead of giving me your very best, you're giving me the blind and the weak and the sick. You're giving me what you don't want. God saying, I want the best. And then look at verse 10. And in verses 10 and 11. Go ahead. 10 and 11. Vagy ha valaki küzdetek bezárna az ajtót, hiába nem tüzelnétek az én oltáromon. Nem telik kedven bennetek, azt mondja a seregeknek uram. Az ételáldozatosság kedvelem a ti kezeitekből, hiszen napkeltejtől fogva napgyugodtig nagy az én nevem a kogányi között, és minden helyen tömjénnel áldoznak az én nevemnek és tiszta ételáldozattal. Bizony nagy az én nevem a kogányi között, azt mondják a seregek. God has called us to honor his name among the nations. Isten elhívott elmondják, hogy hogy dicsérjük, hogy tiszteljük az ő, tisztességet hozunk az ő nevének a nemzetek között. That's our assignment, that's what we are to do. Ez az én mi feladatunk, ezt kell tennünk. He said, my name will be great among the nations. Azt mondja az Úr, hogy az én nevem nagy lesz a nemzetek között. We are to honor him, we are to glorify him, we are to praise him among all the people. Nekünk tisztelni kell, tisztességet adni és dicsérni őt a nemzetek között. And the way we do that is by giving him our very best. És ezt úgy tesszük, hogy a gyakorunkat, a legjobb uh, részünket adjuk. Give him the best of our worship. A legjobb dicsőítést adjuk neki. Give him the best of our life. A legjobb életünket adjuk neki. 
The best of our time. Az időnek a legjobb részét. The best of our, our service and our, our, our ministry. A szolgálatunknak a legjobb részét. Because when we do that, we are saying to the world, God is important to me. Mert amikor ezt tesszük, akkor ezt az üzenetet közvetítünk a világ felé, hogy Isten fontos számomra. I value him. Értékelem őt. He is more important to me than anything else. Ő fontosabb számomra, mint bármi más. And I glorify him and I honor him and he is better, higher than anything else in my life. És én dicsérem őt és tisztelem őt és ő nagyobb az én életem, mint bármi más. But when we are like Israel, Israel, and we don't give him our best, we're saying that's good enough. We're basically saying to the world that God's not important. He's not valuable to us. And then what we do give to him, notice in verse 11, or uh, verse 10, it says, I have no pleasure in you. And I will not accept what you give to me. In other words, I can't bless it. Why do we not receive his, why do we experience his presence? Why aren't we seeing answers to our prayers? Why aren't we seeing the power of God at work in the miracles? Could it be that we're not honoring God as we should? Could it be that we're not giving Him our very best? And we're basically saying, He's not important. Notice what God says later on in verse 14. Because they were not giving God his best. Cursed be the cheat who has a male in his flock and vows it and sacrifices the Lord with his blemish. Gondolom a nyájával hív, és fogad, fogadást is tesz, mégis itt lánya áldozik az Úrban. For I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name will be feared among the nations. Pedig nagy király vagyok én, azt mondja a sejét Úr, és félelmetes az innen a polányok között. Think about that verse. Gondolkozz el ezen az ikén. I am a great king. Én nagy király vagyok. I deserve honor. I deserve your best. And if you're not going to give it, I cannot bless you. And you will not receive from him, from God. In fact, he says you will be cursed. Chapter 2, he goes on, God goes on. Verse 8, you have turned aside from the way, you have caused many to stumble by the instructions he's talking to the priests. The priests were to teach the people and keep the truth and, and, and follow the commandments and, and teach them the truth. A papoknak az volt a feladatok, hogy igazságra tanítsák az embereket, és Istenek parancsolata, hogy tovább adják az embereknek. But because the priests were not doing that, de mivel nem tették ezt a papok, they were not following God's word, nem követték az Isten parancsolat az ő szavát, they were not keeping the covenant, nem uh, tartották be a szövetséget. Verse 9, he says, and I make you despised and abased before all the people. Kiránszerűen versben azt mondja, hogy az, hogy én is cilámosságá tettelek titeket, és utálatosságá az egész nép előtt, amiatt, hogy még nem őriztétek az én utaimat, hanem személyválogatóak voltatok a törvényen. Because you did not value my word enough to obey it. Azért, mert nem értékeltették elég, elég az én szavamat, hogy én kérdemes kérdezik. Because you did not value my word enough to teach it correctly and obey it and keep it. 
hogy ne értékeltétek a szavamat, ha annyira, hogy tanítsátok is, és engedelmes legyetek neki. I will make you despise the days of formality. Azért szidalmat látok fel titeket az ember között. And then chapter 3. Verses we're very familiar with. Will a man rob God? But you are robbing me. But you say, how have we robbed you? What did God say? What? Tithes and offerings. A tizedel és az áldozni valóban. And because they're not giving their tithes and their offerings, they're not obeying God. És mert nem adták a tizedüket és az áldozni valót, azért nem igen elesketek Istennek. The ninth verse says, you are cursed with the curse, for you are robbing me in the relation of you. Kilencedik vers, átokkal vagytok elvátkozom, mégis csaltok engem a nép egészben. Now, this passage can be controversial in the church. Ez a szigen részről sok vita van a gyülekezetben, vita lehet a gyülekezetben. I know there are some people, some churches that say this is Old Testament and this legalism. És tudom, hogy van a gyülekezetek, ahol azt mondják, azt mondják azt, hogy ez az őszövetség, és ez igazából törvényeskedés. And we're in, we live under the New Testament, under grace, we don't have to give our tithes. És mi most már új szövetségben élünk, kegyelem alatt már nem kell fel adni tizenek. But I, I think we, in order to understand the, the, the intent, what God is meaning in this passage, we need to compare it or look at another uh, prophet, Haggai. Because Haggai and Malachi were prophesying about the same time. And they are in the same area and they are dealing with similar problems. And Haggai prophesied chapter 1 verses 2 through 9. Go ahead. Így szól a seregeknek, Uram mondván, ezt mondja ennél, nem jött még el az idő az Úr házaépítésének ideje. Az Úr pedig így szól a Gölös Profita által mondván, ideje én nektek, hogy ti mennyezetes házakban lakhozzatok, holott az én, ez a ház romban áll. Most azért ezt mondja a seregek, seregeknek, Uram, gondoljátok meg jól a ti utaitokat. Sokat vettettek, de keresett, de takartok. Eztek, de meg nem elégeztek. Tisztok, de meg nem részegeztek. Ruhászkodtok, de meg nem melegeztek. A bérről is lyukas zacskó a bére. Ezt mondja a seregeknek ura, gondoljátok meg jól a ti utaitukat. Menjetek fel a hegyre, és hordjátok fát, és építsetek a házat, hogy gyönyörködjön bennem, és dicsőítessen. Azt mondja az úr. Sokat váltatok, de én még kevés tett. A hazai skolitán, a holottátok, de én ráfogadok arra. Jókért. Azt mondja a sereknek, ura, az én házamért, ami én romban áll, ti pedig siettek, itt jön a maga házához. See, I think in order to understand Malachi, we need to read Haggai. Hát ahhoz, hogy megértsük a Malachias profitát, el kell olvasunk az Angelus profitát. Because I believe what God is saying through both of these prophets. Én nem mondanom, hogy amit Isten üzen ezen a két profitán keresztül. Is that they were not putting God's house first. Az az, hogy nem tették első helyre az Isten házát. They were more concerned with their own needs. Nem voltak foglalva a saját szükségükkel. That they were more concerned with taking care of themselves. Sokkal többet foglalkoztak azzal, hogy a saját maguk javát szolgálják. And God is saying, by doing that, they're saying God's house is not important. És mivel ezt tették, ezt azt üzenték, hogy Isten háza nem is olyan fontos. God is not important. És Isten sem fontos. The kingdom of God is not important. És Isten kiránysága sem fontos. And God is saying, because you did not put me first, because you did not value me and honor me. És azt mondja Isten, hogy mivel nem tettek engem az első helyre, nem tiszteltetek engem, és nem becsületek meg. You were cursed with the curse. Átok alá került. According to Malachi. Malachiás szerint. According to Haggai. 
He says everything you've tried to do has not been successful. You've sown much, but harvested little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you never have your full. You, you have clothes, but you're never warm. You earn wages, but it's never enough. So he's saying through Haggai and Malachi both, take care of my house first. Bring your tithes according to Malachi, bring your tithes into the storehouse so there there's food in my house. Put my house first. In and what will happen? I will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you. According to Haggai, go to the hills and bring wood and build a house. That I may take pleasure in it and that I may be glorified. And Matthew 6 33, Jesus says the same thing. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Malachi, Haggai, Matthew 6.33, they're all saying the same thing. Honor God first. Put the kingdom of God first. Because if we don't, we will not receive His blessing. When God speak, spoke to Malachi and says, You are robbing me. I don't believe God was talking about the 10%. God doesn't need us to give our 10%. He doesn't need our money. I mean, He owns everything, right? He doesn't need our money. But he needs us to honor him through our giving. So when he says we were robbing God, we were robbing him of his honor. Because we were not putting him first. We were not valuing him. We were saying, God, you're not important. So if we want to experience God's presence, if we want to experience his power in his glory in our lives, if we want to see God the miracles, we need to honor him. We need to glorify him. We need to give him the glory that is his. So how do we do that? Well, we've already talked about in, in, in uh, the examples that we, we have to give him our best. We have to put him first above everything else. But there's other ways that we honor God too. We honor the Father when we honor the Son. Look at John 5.23. Uh, John 5.23. John 5.23. If we honor the Son, we honor the Father. When we recognize who Jesus is, you know, there are people in the world today that say Jesus is just a good man. 
Egyszerűen csak egy jó ember. He is just a prophet. Egy profita. A good teacher. Egy jó tanító. No. He is the Son of God. He is the Creator. He is the Lord. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. His name is above every other name. The name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that He is Lord. We need to give Him that honor. And not just with our words, but recognize Him with our honor Him with our lives. In everything we do, we recognize that He is Lord. And when we say He is Lord, that means that His word is truth. Az azt jelenti, hogy az ő igény az ő szava igaz. And his commandments must be obeyed. És az ő parancsolataiknak engedelmeskednünk kell. So if we are not obeying his word, és ha nem engedelmeskedünk az ő igényünknek, we are not honoring him. Akkor nem ezzel nem tiszteljük őt. And he cannot honor us. És ő nem tud tisztelni a tetszat. Give him our best. Odaadjuk a legjobbat. Value his word. Értékeljük az ő igényt. And Esteem him, honor him, value him. And desire to be with him. But don't make him common. Don't lower him to a level where we try to understand him. It's like standing before Niagara Falls. And you're in the presence of His glory. Imagine, like whenever you read through the Bible, men like Isaiah and John who had a vision of God. They, they stood before the very throne of God. Imagine if you had that same vision. If you were standing before the throne of God and you saw the glory of God. And you could hear the angels. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. You saw glory of God. Experience the presence of God. How would you respond? Oh, that's nice. Yo. We would fall on our face. Glorify Him, praise Him. You realize that even now, any time we come in, any time we spend time in His Word and in prayer, we become in the doors of the church for worship. You are entering the throne of God. When you go into your prayer closet to spend time with the Lord, you are entering the throne of God. I think we made it too compact. Oh, we're, we're going to church. We're going to sing some songs. We're going to hear somebody talk for too long. We are entering the presence of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We are entering the presence of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We should give him the honor that he is. We do this. We can't add in a class that is the one that only he is worthy. We honor God by honor. Honor the Father when we honor Jesus. The happy tisztelő atyát, amikor tiszteljük fiú Jézus. John thirteen twenty also. 
János 13-hoz. Bizony, bizony, mondom néktek, aki befogadja, befogadja ha valaki elküldött, engem fogadja el. Aki pedig engem befogad, azt fogadja el, aki engem küldött. So we also honor God when we honor one another. Tehát akkor is tiszteljük Isten, amikor tiszteljük egymást. Jesus says, whoever honors the one I send, azt mondja Jézus, ha valaki tiszteli azt, akit én elküldök, honors me. Ezzel tisztel engem. If you honor me, you honor the Father. Ha engem tisztelsz, tiszteled az Atyát. Who are the ones that Jesus sent? Ki azok, akiket Jézus elküldött? Ahhoz. Mindjárt azok. His disciples. Az ő tanítványai. His people. Az ő emberei. He sent us into the world. Ő elküldött bennünket a világba. So we need to honor one another. Így tisztelnünk kell egymást. Because we are members of the same body. Mert egy testnek a tagjai vagyunk. We are members of the body of Christ. We are His ambassadors. We are brothers and sisters in the Lord. We share the same spiritual DNA. So remember what Jesus said in Matthew 25. When He talked about the sheep and the goats. And he blessed the sheep because they they fed him, they clothed him, they visited him in the in the prisons. És megáldotta az a a a nyáját, mert ők megáldották őt a börtönben, mert adtak neki enni és adtak neki inni. And they said, when did we do that to you? Azt mondták a a zöldjék, hogy de mikor tettük mi ilyet? What did Jesus say? Mit mondott Jézus? When you go to the feast with these my brethren, amikor nem kisebbek kell tettél ezt. Note this. We need to understand this. As many of us should not get you. The way we treat one another, as our young man gave my son, is how we treat Jesus. Not that you have to put your man Jesus on. We say that again. We are all part of the body of Christ. We are all brothers and sisters. So the way we treat one another is how we treat Christ. If we honor one another, if we receive one another, if we love one another, we are honoring Christ. But if I complain about you, if I gossip about you, if I am bitter towards you, if I have any problems with you, that reflects my relationship with Jesus Christ. It hinders my relationship with Christ. And I cannot receive from Christ if I am not honoring you. First John 421. <tos> Az a parancsolatunk is van a kötőre, hogy aki szereti az Isten, szeressen a maga atyafiait is. If anyone says I love God, ha valaki azt mondja, hogy szeretem Isten, but does not love his brother, de nem szereti a testvérét, az atyafiát, what does God say? Mit mond Isten? Liar. Hazug. If anyone says I honor God, azt mondja az ember, én 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 tisztelem Isten, but we're not honoring one another. If anyone says, "I value God," well, if you ask more, you'll find no one can take care of Mishnah. But we don't value one another. Then I'm going to take care of one. Liar. 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 Isten must honor his brother. Now notice, it does not say 
must love his brother if his brother loves him first. Menjük észre azt, hogy nem mondja az igen azt, hogy akkor kell szeretnünk a testvért, ha ő elsőnek szeret engem. Does your Bible say that? Így van a Bibliában. That you must, you love your brother only if he loves you. Úgy szeres a testvéredet akkor, ha ő is szeret téged. Does it say in the English translation? Angol fordítva, úgy van. You love your brother only if he loves you. Szeres a testvéredet ha ő is szeret téged. But what if he hurts me? De mi a ha megbánt? You love him. Szeres. What if he does something to against me? De mi a ha tesz valamit ellenem? That makes me mad. Amit ami felbújít. What do we do? Mit teszek? Love him. Love her. You honor them. You treat them as a member of the body of Christ. Now, if there's a problem, you, you need to deal with it in the biblical way as God directs us to. But, what he, but, but how do you do that? You go to them and you talk with them and you work it out. Oda mész hozzá, beszéltek róla, és, és megtaláljátok az utat. And as you're doing it, és ahogy teszitek ezt, you do it with honor, tiszteletet teszitek ezt, and love, és szeretettel. You treat them with dignity and respect. Méltósággal és tisztelettel bánsz vele. You don't go up to the person that says, you idiot, why did you do that? You hurt me, don't you understand what you did? Nem minden úgy mész hozzá, te idióta, nem érted, hogy mennyire fáj ez nekem? You treat them with honor and respect. Tiszteletet és méltósággal válsz az emberek. As you deal with the problem. Amikor szemben ez a probléma. Whatever we do to one another. Bármit is teszünk egymással. It affects our relationship with Christ. Tükrözi a mérkőt. És befolyással van a mi kapcsolatunk a Krisztusra. We need to understand, and I want you to catch this. Fontos, hogy megértsük, és itt szeretném azt felfognál, megérteni. We can't control what people do. Nem tudjuk irányítani azt, vagy kontrollálni azt, hogy mit tesznek az emberek. But we can control how we respond to that. De tudjuk irányítani a mi reagálásunkat, a mi válaszunkat ezek a csendben. És Érted ezt? We say it again. I want you to really get a hold of this. We can't control what people do. We can't control what they say. We can't control how they behave. We can't control how they treat us. But we can control how we respond to what they do. A mi válaszunkat ezekre a dolgokkal. We can choose to either get bitter, választhatunk, vagy lehet választani, vagy keserűséggel leszünk tehát. We can get angry, vagy mérgesek leszünk. We can treat them with, with um, uh, bad, poorly, rosszul bánunk velük. Or we can decide, vagy mit döntünk. I'm going to honor them. Tiszteletem, tiszteletem fogom ezt az ember. I'm going to love them. Szeretném. I'm going to treat them as a brother and sister in Christ. And I'm going to pray for them. And I'm going to pray for them. And I'm going to make sure that our relationship, when I deal with the problem, so that our relationship is good. Let me say this one more time. You can't control what other people do or say. Mit tesznek, vagy mit mondanak az emberek. But you can't control how you respond. De tudod irányítani a válaszodat erre. And we must choose to say, I will honor them no matter what. És azt a döntést kell hoznunk, hogy én bármi is történik, én tisztelni fogom ezt az embert, az embereket. I will love them no matter what. Bármi is történik, én szeretni fogom őket. I will treat them with dignity and respect no matter what. Méltósággal és tisztelettel viszonyulok hozzájuk, bármi is történik. That, és ha ezt megtesszük, azt mondja Isten, hogy ha tisztelettel vagyok irántuk, akkor mi egymást tiszteljük. És ezzel tiszteljük Jézus.
we are honoring your father. Then we are creating an environment in which the presence of God can come. If I value Jesus Christ, I will value his body too. Amen. Amen. Another way we can honor God we honor the Father when we honor Jesus we honor the Father when we honor one another in the body of Christ but I believe we also honor the Father when we honor those who are rejected by society even those outside of the body of Christ amikor tiszteljük az elvetett embereket, azokat, akiket lemondtak, akiket elvetett még, akikről lemondott társadalom. Look at Luke chapter 5, verses 12 and 13. This is the last verse. Nézzük meg a Lukács 5. részben, verses 12 and 13. Lukács 5, 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 12 and 13. És jön, hogy az egyik városban vala, imé vala ott egy fokossággal teljes ember. És amikor meglátta Jézus arcra borulva kére őt, mondva, Uram, ha akarod, megtisztíthatsz engem. Jézus pedig, pedig kinyújtván kezét, illeti, illeti azt, mondva, akarom, tisztülj meg, és azonnal eltávozzék vele a bél fokosság. This is an amazing situation, amazing incident. Ez egy lenyugvőző uh, eset. For one thing, it says the man was full of leprosy. And at, at that time, if a person had leprosy, they were not allowed to come in contact with other people. They were not allowed to enter the cities. If they saw, if they were on the road and they saw people coming, they had to shout and say, I'm, I'm leprous, you need to warn them. And so, for this leper, the man with leprosy to come before Jesus and fall at his face was out of the usual, uh, out of the norm. And then for Jesus to even, for Jesus to touch him was basically forbidden, it was not customary. But I, as I read this passage, I was thinking in my mind how this man who had been rejected by society, Everybody else said you're, you're not valuable, you're not important. You cannot be with us. You have to separate yourself from us. They cast him out, they rejected him. And he hears about Jesus. And he comes before Jesus and falls at his feet. He honors him. And he says, if you want, you can heal me. And I can kind of hear his heart saying, I've been rejected. Nobody will accept me. Nobody wants me. But if you want, you can heal me. And by Jesus 
stretching out the very act of touching him. Against all tradition, against all custom. I believe by touching him, Jesus says, You are valuable to me. I accept you. I receive you. You heal. And I believe that there are people, I know there are people in the world. And there may be even people here today who are feeling like they've been rejected. Who are feeling unloved. Who are feeling unwanted. And they're crying out, saying, Somebody touch me. Somebody receive me. Somebody accept me. There's an emptiness, a brokenness in her heart. And we as a church, if we go out into the world, if we will do like Jesus did, and reach out to those people, and let them know they're, they're loved, we can show them the love of God and we are honoring the Father when we do that. But you know it's so easy for us to look at them and say, oh, they're alcoholics, drug addicts, prostitutes or homosexuals or whatever it may be. They're, they're dirty, they're filthy. And so we, we, we reject them because of what they're doing or the behavior. But we need to see them, learn to see them as God sees them. Because remember, they were created in the image of God too. Now that image may be stained and dirty and, and distorted. But they were created in the image of God. And they were valuable enough to Jesus that he died for them. They were valuable enough to Jesus that he died for them. So how can we reject it? As I said, I preached this message in Yerevo, Romania, last August. And this, the Saturday before I was to preach this message, I uh, took my Bible and my notes and went to a, a restaurant and to meditate and to study. It's a beautiful August day. I sat outside on the table out in front of the restaurant outside. Had, had a coffee. Stood, read, reading my Bible. <laughs> studying my notes. <laughs> Young lady came up to me. Wanted some money. Now I don't make it a practice of giving people money when they beg for it. So 
So I just kind of dismissed her, said no, I'm hoping she'd go away. She just stood there. She was saying something, but it was all in Romanian. I didn't understand it. And she just stood there. And I said, I'm sorry. I don't have any money. She just stood there. Finally, I, I reached in my pocket. I did have some change in my pocket. I reached out and put the change in just a small amount of change. She just stood there. And I finally, I just said, I don't, and she was saying something to me, but it was Romanian, I didn't understand. I finally said, I don't have any money, I'm sorry. And so she finally left. I went back to, you know, and I was being, went back to my Bible and, and my notes. So I could be spiritual again. And I got down, immediately looked down at my notes here where it's talking about this passage in Luke 5. And Jesus touching the leper. And I felt the Spirit of God say to me, how did you just treat her? Did you honor her? Did you love her? Or was she just a nuisance? Did, was she a bother? And you just wanted to get rid of her? Did you treat her with dignity and respect? Or did you treat her like she was worthless and not valuable? And then the Lord said, Are you going to just talk about it or are you going to do something? Are you actually going to live? This or is it just simply words? Unfortunately, she hadn't gotten very far. She was still close. I followed her and did give her some money. But the point was, what God was trying to teach was not that I had to give the money every time I asked for it. What God was showing me was my attitude towards him. He was trying to teach me that he was valuable to me. I did see this lady again later on. And I had a Romanian with me, with me that the chancellor supported her. And, and she asked for some money again. I didn't give her money, but I did say, I'd like to pray for you. So we prayed for her. So it was, the, the point, as I said, is not whether or not we give them money, it's how we treat them. And what I've been praying, what I've been asking the Lord to help me, is Lord, help me to see them as you see them. They're not dirty alcoholics, filthy drug addicts. They are people created in the image of God. On an earth and back. Who God loves. Who God loves. And Jesus valued enough that he died for them. And if we can treat them with honor and respect, then we are honoring the Father. And I believe we are opening the door then 
és mi késünk, hiszen a két jó az ajtó. And we are creating an environment. És egy olyan környezetben lépünk, in which the power of God can work. Ahol Istennek az erejét a munkát. And we will see His presence. És meglátjuk az ő jelenét. We will see His power. Meglátjuk az ő erejét. We won't be like Nazareth. Nem, mert nem leszünk olyan, mint a Nazarethiek. But we will. But God will be able to do mighty, wonderful miracles. Do we want to see the power and the presence of God in our, in our, in our lives and in our, our churches? We'll only experience that when we give Him the honor that He deserves. When we value Him for who He really is. And we do that by giving Jesus our very best. We do that when we honor Father, when we honor one another. We treat one another with dignity, with respect, with value. And when we receive those who are hurting in society as rejected. So, ask the Holy Spirit. Open up your heart. Lord, show me by the ways that I have dishonored you. Am I giving you my best? Is there somebody in the body of Christ that I have dishonored? Is there somebody in the body of Christ, like a brother or sister, that 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 uh, has offended me and I'm not in a relationship with? What is my attitude towards those whose society is rejected? Ask God to show you. Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart. And then look for opportunities this week to honor somebody, to show them that they are valued and precious. Amen. Father, I just thank you for the day. Thank you for your word. Lord, I pray, speak to our hearts. I know that we fail in so many ways in this area. I know that there are many ways that we are not giving you our best. That we are not putting you first. That we are not valuing you. So, Father, I pray that you help us to honor you as we should. And Lord, I know there's so many ways as Christians that we hurt one another. When we complain and, and gossip and, and grumble about brothers and sisters in the Lord. When we fight with one another, we cannot honor you when we do that, when we treat one another that way. So Lord, I pray that you speak to our hearts. If there's anything in our life in which we are hurting, any way we are hurting a brother or sister in Christ, if there's any hindrance or any uh, barriers that are hindering our relationship, Lord, I pray that you help us to make that right.
but above all, that we learn to treat one another with honor. That we value those who are in the body of Christ. And Lord, I pray that you help us to see those who are outcasts of society, to see everyone at it outside of the body of Christ, outside of the church, to see them as you see them. The rich, the poor, no matter where they are. To see them that, that they are created in your image. That you value them. That you love them enough that you died for them. Lord, change our hearts. And help us to honor you in every area of our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.